Hi everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. So, today we don't have a project as such. Um, they're coming in the next couple of weeks. Um, I will be uploading one of the lathe actually next week. Um, so, um, today we have uh, my lawnmower. So, I recently, well in the last week, rebuilt this engine from, well from scratch. So basically I stripped it completely down. Uh, new rings, new everything, um, and I've also converted it to reseat. Really we have this loom on it now, which is converted to electric start. So, and this video is more about the repairing of the little gearbox that drives the lawnmower and self-drive. Um, so where do I start? So what I'm going to do here now is I'm going to do a demonstration of the problem. So over the last couple of years or so, I've been uh, repairing, trying to repair the self-drive um, externally, so outside the gearbox, by basically adjusting the cables and stuff. But the problem is um, the clutch is at its limit. Um, it's worn. Um, the the lumber is quite old, even though it sort of looks um, in good enough condition, because I'd done it up about four or five years ago. Um, However, I didn't do the self-drive up. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do a wee demonstration of what the problem is and then I'm going to move on to, well, taking this cover off, locating the self-drive, repairing it, um, taking it to pieces, um, modifying the clutch if need be. So the wee self-drive gearbox in this can be 300 to 400 pounds. It can be only sourced in America. Um, I have recently looked for it again and I can't find it. So about a year ago I tried searching for the little gearbox and it was about £350 or £400 or something. As far as I can mind it was very, really expensive. So um, the, the engine itself is Bridge and Stratton. As I say I have um, added a starter motor to it now and a little battery and a little loom off a mount feed lawnmower. So it's a really easy start it. So I'll try, I'll do a demo in this here. So one prompt of the prime in it there. Oh, oh, that <laughs> worked So you can see it's really easy start it. So you can see I wasn't fully turning the ignition on there. That's why it wouldn't start. So this loom is purchased off eBay. Um, the starter is purchased off eBay and I have uh, adapted made a wee bracket for it. I've put ring gear onto the flywheel. Uh, what else have I done? So, fully rebuilt the engine. If you want to see that process, there's images will follow at the end of this video demonstration. This video is, however, about repairing the clutch in the lawnmower. It's a free speed lawnmower, free speed gearbox. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to bring the video up, or sorry, the camera up and do a video of it before I start demoing the fault. So, what do we see? Hopefully you can hear me nice and clear there because it's a wee bit windy out here. So, let me get this camera in my hand. So as I say, it's a free speed. Um, this lever at the bottom is to engage the clutch. So no matter how um, tight I squeeze this, or how far I adjust the little lever and at the gearbox, it makes no difference because the clutch is at its limit. So, I'll do a wee demo of this now actually trying to, I'll bring the camera around this side maybe and start it up and show how the mechanism, or the clutch is not working so what do we see, this road's busy today so um, hopefully you can see that now I'll take the camera back a bit Okay, so you'll hopefully see me there now starting that and moving the lever for the clutch. So, first things first, right? I'm going to start it here. Hopefully, it's easy to start it. Ok, so 
Okay, so you can probably see now that the lawnmower's struggling to go. Um, even on first gear, second gear, and third gear. So even on first gear, the lowest gear, it still doesn't want to go. Um, you can, however, get it to go in first gear if you give it a wee push. But that's quite useless for um, hills and stuff. This uh, road's like a racetrack today. So um, what we're going to do now is we're going to take this cover off. Then we're going to give it a wash and then we'll get into the nuts and grits of the gearbox and how it works and the clutch inside the gearbox is obviously this is a clutch problem. Um, I know there's wee ratchet cog gear wheels on here but that's not the issue here so um, we'll start doing this now. Take this cover off and um, yeah we'll give it a wee quick wash. So two screws at the top. I'm gonna get this in the view. Watch me back, Ray. I'm gonna see if I'm on view here, just. Okay, so that's me. So we'll take the old battery limb off at the meantime. You don't need it. So when I remove this cover now, I will expose um, the gearbox. Um, the self-drive belt, um, the axle and stuff, so, um, well, the drive train going on to the wheels even. So I want to bring the camera up closer here. Okay, so here we have the little um, gearbox, so it's a free speed gearbox. If I move this lever, um, that selects the three speed gears. That's not the issue. The issue is this clutch. So here we have the clutch lever. So when I move the clutch up here, we have this clutch moving in and out. So no matter if I push this in tight with a you new know, tire lever or anything, a bar, to try and get the clutch to engage, it doesn't work because I believe that the clutch is at its limit in the inside. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to give it a wee wash. We're going to take the gearbox apart. Um, then we're going to figure out a way of repairing it because I'm definitely not spending 400 pound on a gearbox when well you could buy a new lawnmower. Obviously this lawnmower is like a an industrial type lawnmower. That's why I want to repair it because she's quite good. I forgot to mention she's got these uh, wheels that spin at the front. She's quite fancy. So um, if I slacken or sorry if I Move this lever forward to unlock position. She can, the wheels obviously go 360 degrees around. Really good for going around trees and stuff. I need to repair this one yet. I have a cover coming in the post. The cover fell off and I munched it up a long time ago. So back to the gearbox. We're gonna take this apart now. We're gonna wash it and then we're gonna take it apart. So here we go. Okay, so that's it done. Um, next step now is taking that belt off, um, the self-drive belt. So this is run to the spindle and engine, the crankshaft, shaft. Um, uh, so now we're going to take this belt off, remove this pulley, this spring for tension in the belt. Yeah, um, you can see that the little gearbox is painted black with a coat of red oxide below it. So that was um, all sandblasted and painted about, I think it was four or five years ago. So now we're gonna move on here, put the camera on the stand and start stripping this. Okay, so um, what we're gonna do here now is we're gonna take this little gearbox. Well, I'll take the drive belt off first. So I had that uh, nut already slackened there. Let me see if I can hammer. Probably take this belt off first, you know. So what do we see? There we go. Um, now the tensioner, the spring. So basically, just pull it out like so. Next thing now is this pulley. That's already slack. 
So it's not on a taper here or nothing, it's just sitting on a little pin. So um quite easy to dismantle this one. Um so next step now would be the clutch cable. But first I'm gonna give a little um description here of how it works. So when I pull this lever, um you can see um this little lever on the transmission, the little gearbox moving in and out. But if I pull on full here and then try and move this lever, do you see the way it's solid? Well, that's telling me no matter how much how much extra leverage is on this lever, it's gonna do no good. The clutch is never gonna engage. So there's obviously something wrong in here. So I'll take this off now. Um I'll take off this little gear selector too. Um, a socket just fell down the inside the engine here. So we'll remove this bracket that's holding the cable for the gear selectors. So as I mentioned there, you can see that this gearbox is not all corroded and it's black. It's because I've previously um, done this more up um, to remove any rust or corrosion. Okay, so basically just lifting the gear selector out of the way, cable. Um, Next step now is this clutch itself. So what I'm going to do here is just put slight pressure on these tabs holding the cable into the plate at both sides. Take it out like so. Um, so that's the clutch cable off. Um, next step now is the bracket for the clutch. So you can see here in the past um, I have moved this as far that way as possible to, um, well, you can see that I'm at the, at the limit, um, I can't go no further. Um, as I mentioned, it doesn't matter if I can get any further anyway, the clutch is never going to engage because it's worn inside the big gearbox. So I'll remove this bracket here now too. And then we're into stripping the gearbox itself. Or the self drive gearbox. Okay. So, what I'm going to do here now, I'm also going to get a block of timber. So, I'll stop the camera two seconds to get a block here. Okay, so got my timber. Um, what this is for is just basically to set the mur. Set the mur. The moor. What am I talking about? Set the moor up on the wee gearbox like so. That's just to put pressure up to hold the casing up so it doesn't fall down with the gears and stuff on it. So next step now is removing the top cover off the gearbox. It's also to keep any oil and stuff you know falling on the ground. Four out. So I'm going to see if we can get this cover off now. Where it's at. There we go. So um, I can already see the clutch here. I can see the lever control and the selector for the gears. I can see the clutch lever. Um, well, that controls this little clutch. So this clutch works a little different from a clutch in a car. This cl clutch here, as you can see, when this lever is turned, it engages the clutch. So in a car you have a pressure plate that's keeping pressure on it, on the, the clutch plate to the flywheel at all times. This is acting completely different. So this requires you to pull the lever in on the lawnmower up here, the clutch lever, to engage the clutch. So it's back to front. So um, what I'm going to do here now is I'm going to take the clutch out. Um, I'm going to clean the two casings with paraffin oil and the gears. And then we will examine the clutch itself and how it works exactly and what's worn on it and stuff like that. And we'll take the measurements and stuff. So that's it. Okay, so I went to get a pair of gloves there and I couldn't find any, so I'm just going to have to stick this one out. So, um, before I go any further, I should point out some people will state that adjusting this clutch, um, the cable, this part here on the gearbox, um, here, by adjusting this this way, that's going to work, yes, but only if the clutch is not worn um, beyond its limit. So, um, 
what this fix is doing here now, well hopefully it will be fixed, um, is basically bringing the clutch back into spec, if that makes sense. So what I'm going to do here now is I'm going to drop this gearbox out, remove the bit of timber and carefully lower it down. Okay, so a close up here now, here we have the clutch, basket, sort of like a cone shaped clutch. So we have a, an outer face and an inner face. So I'll take this um, to the bench, uh, we'll take this out, uh, we'll wash these two covers and then we'll move on to modifying the actual cone shaped clutch itself. So hopefully you enjoy. Okay, so I've come outside here to do this little demonstration um, of the fault. So, um, as you can see, we're working in a cardboard box so we don't lose any parts or components. Hopefully you can see me nice and clear there, or what's going on in the background even. Um, so, we have this top casing that you've seen me removing here. We have the shaft, the, the wee pinion wheel, the wee gear, which turns this um, crown wheel on this shaft, or this gear assembly. So, I'm going to remove parts here that are not being used, or won't be need to be modified even. So, we'll only require these when we're building the gearbox again. So we have this gear selector lever. Um, don't need it. Um, we have the clutch lever here at this point. So I'll give a wee demonstration on how this clutch works. So when this crown wheel's spinning um, all the time when the lawnmower engine's running, we have a shaft. It's turning a shaft up the inside here. Um, this shaft er, has a basket type sort of one part of the clutch and this basket's always spinning too whilst this crown wheel's spinning. So we have these gear selectors in here in the middle that are turning um, only when they're in the clutch is engaged. So this clutch is engaged by this lever um, putting pressure on these thrust washers. So basically it forces this cylinder that's spinning into the clutch and then we have the gears engaged uh, which runs on to the other shaft that's on the axle, the gears or the gear assembly on the axle itself. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to remove this. Um, I'm going to try and get as much detail on it as possible. Um, it might be kind of tricky to explain the fault here but I will try my best. Um, I might do a wee draw on after I discuss this, we'll see. So here we have the gear assembly moved. Um, we don't need this here part, this um, select, or sorry, the clutch arm. It's okay, it doesn't need modified. We have a pile of shims, and we also have, sorry, let me see if I get this off. We have the shims, and we have thrust bearing. So, basically, that's the part that puts pressure on this basket. Um, I'm going to call it a basket because it's very like a motorbike containing all the clutch plates. So um, then we have this little bear in here at the end but you don't need that too. And also we have another shim so be careful not to lose it. Um, okay so we have the first part of the clutch. I'm sliding it off here right. So here we have a basket type part. Um, this spins all the time and the crown wheel spinning here at the side. When the lawnmower engine's running, this is always spinning. It only becomes engaged when you pull the lever. Okay. The problem is, right? Um, so okay, so I'll strip the rest of it here first. So taking the crown wheel off. Uh, take this pin out. So you can probably realise it's not the first one of these I done. Um, I stripped them before. So taking um, the gear assembly off, sitting it on top of the crown wheel the way it came off. Then we're left with the clutch and the shaft. So, as I mentioned, there's a pin through here, right? Um, we have the crown wheel spinning there all the time. So it always spins with this cylinder type um, component here and outside. I'm going to call it a basket for today. So, taking the basket off, we have a spring for... Um, well, basically, it disengages the clutch. So it's required. Um, so it's fighting against you when you're pulling the lever in. Um, so it wants to go, it wants to disengage again. So basically, it's um, to keep these two components apart um, when not engaged, when the clutch is not engaged. So, um, 
next step now, so that's off, take a spring off, um, we can now take out this shaft because all the gear assembly is gone at the back here at this point. So here we have the parts that I'm going to call worn. Um, we have friction plates or friction parts, they're made out of brass. Um, they don't look worn but they clearly are. Um, well, they do look worn a little bit on the inside. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to modify these parts to make the clutch hopefully work again. Um, rather than removing the area, the friction area um, off this and taking a wee part off here. Okay, so I'm jumping ahead of myself. So when this clutch is being engaged, right, it's at its limit. So these little brass parts are hitting the inside of this face and where these two tapered faces meet. So what I'm going to do rather than removing the excess material off here, so that reduces um, the face area, um, the friction area, um, so you don't want the clutch to start slipping, so you want as much um, face area here as possible. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove it off the inside of this basket instead. So this will allow these little brass parts to go further into the basket and to meet the face where it needs to meet. At the minute, when these, when well, this here has been pushed up against this, um, these little brass parts, because there's a little bit of material worn off the side and a little bit of material worn off the side, these little brass parts are, are what do you call it? They're going sort of too far in, if that makes sense. But they are hitting the inner face of this basket. Hopefully you can see it there. Let me see if I can point it out with an Allen key or something. So see on the inside here, um, this little face. The face is parallel um, to this face, not the tapered faces. You don't want to touch them. You want to take this face in about a half a mil. Um, you can't buy the parts for these gearboxes, just to point out. So this is why I'm doing this. If you want to buy a 400 pound gearbox, go for it. But I'd much rather do this. So um, when I remove that material, that face in the under, um, I'm going to remove a little bit of material off this ridge here and also this inner ridge. Let me see if I get the Allen key again. So I'm going to remove a half a mil off here and a half a mil off here. The reason I'm going to do that is because see here this little fine gap. Um, when I remove the material off the inside, this might get closer to this, um, this plate, if that makes sense. So it's important to remove a bit of material off here and a bit of material off here to match the inside. Um, the reason I know that this clutch is not um, going as far as it should is because I can see exactly um, where the basket part, let me see if I get this on in my hand here, it's all grease. I can see where the basket has left, has wore, started to wear, uh, wear this little washer. Somebody see if I can get it off here. So you can take these out. Um, I'm not going to touch them. So you can see here at this point, the little ridge around it. Um, basically, um, do you see this part of the basket? It's digging into it. So that means, to, that's telling me that the clutch is at its limit and it can go no further. That's what I'm trying to say. So it's quite a lot of detail there to explain that, but hopefully you get the gist. So what I'm going to do here now is I'm going to do a modification on the lathe and I might do a wee draw on before I move on off this but I, I think I've explained it quite well to be honest so I might just jump on to the lathe here now and so we don't need to modify these brass parts we don't want to touch them but we, what we could do is we could track them deeper um, so tracking them will give it a little bit more grip um, so I'll track them on the outside with a mill uh, sorry a mill cutting this on a four and a half inch grinder and because we have to sort of mind that little part that little platform at the bottom here we'll cut the inside with a dremel um, so the modification will mainly come to the basket and hopefully we will get another maybe I don't know years and years out of this lawnmower by doing this so um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to the lathe and hopefully um, he's enjoyed this little uh, not going to say project but Torture? <laughs>
Okay, so before I start working on this drum, I'm just going to give a wee final demonstration of these little brass parts of the clutch in where they're meant to be when the clutch is engaged. So if I place them all on, basically that's what they look like. Well, they would look like inside the gearbox when the clutch is engaged, fully in. Um, the problem is, right, if you look at one of them here closely, do you see if you look in here, let me see if I can get it in view, it's quite difficult uh, to see here, but if you look away on at the corner here, you can see that the brass, this face here on this little friction uh, component is, I don't actually know the name of these parts, but um, obviously like a clutch plate, um, two-sided. Um, cone shaped part, tapered part, so um, this face is clearly hitting um, the face on the inside, bang on. So this is where the clutch is bottoming out and when it bottoms out it um, can't go any further. So basically this tapered part can't meet the, um, the face, the two faces, the two tapered faces shall I say, of the basket part of the clutch. So as I mentioned I'm what I'm going to do here now earlier there I'm going to cut a little bit off the inside of this um, basket just about half a mil. Half a mil is a lot like. Um, I probably will remove half a mil maybe no more but up to half a mil just to see a uh, clearance um, in there at the two faces. Um, I also am going to remove a little bit off this face here and this face but in here we require a special sort of cutting tool Nara to get in so I'm going to shape this now uh, approximately about it's about hmm I see three and a half mil wide just to take enough off um, this face and the inside so we'll do that now we'll start grinding this and then we'll um, do work on this on the lathe and yeah so three faces again this one needs trimmed and this needs trimmed and then here needs cut that makes sense so um, we'll start working this wee tool first and then we'll put this into the lathe and I have to get a end of a lathe here obviously but um, yeah I'm still working on my own so um, let's go let's cut this cutting tool Okay, so that's not bad. Um, you can see there now it fits right onto the face. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put this in the lathe and take a half a mil off it. Um, so this cutting tool will move a half a mil into the part. And then we should stop um, when the clutch is engaged. We should stop, well it should stop um, slippage. So um, then these two faces will be able to hit the face on the, the drum itself or cylinder shape, um, the basket. And yeah, so we'll start doing work now in the lathe now that the cutting tool is finished. Okay, so what we're going to do here first is remove the material off this edge and this edge. So after that, we then will move on, uh, we'll put this cutting tool into the lathe and we'll remove the material from the inside here. This will um, in turn allow these parts to protrude further in to the, the faces, the mating faces when the clutch is engaged. So we'll put this in the lathe now and we'll take, basically we're just going to take about a half a mil off it. Um, at most, um, not that much, or maybe a wee fraction more. So what do I get the chuck key here if I can find it? There we go. So we're ready to rock. Can I get my goggles on just? 
Okay, so that's one age done. Um, now you're moving on to the inner age. Okay, so what I zoom in here. So you can see there now in the face. Um, there's a wee shaving taken off it. So what we're going to do now, we're going to move, we're going to set the leaf up and take a wee bit off the inside um, of the new cutting tool that I've cut. Okay, so I have the wee cutting tool on here. Um, let me see. Now I have the tip sharpened up. And we are basically going to go right on here between these two walls. That sucks. Uh, so that's me touching the surface, I don't know if it's turn now. So all I need to do now, I have a torch going here, and it's a wee bit difficult for well, the camera and the stand because the tool post is, a, is at the side I'm looking to record, so um, I'll just go for it here. Okay, so that's a half a mile. I'm going to stop a late, you should see the wee ridge on the side. It's kind of difficult to see in, but um, that's it. So we're going to um, take this out, um, just measure to make sure it is a half a mile, and we will start putting the gear assembly back together. Um, first things first, we have to clean the casings. So, hope you enjoy. Okay, so now that I have um, this part complete, I'm now going to move on to tracking these little brass pieces to give them a little bit more uh, grip. So we're going to start off with the outside face um, using the grinder. Um, the, three the three parts, uh, three identical parts. Then we will move on to the inside of them using the Dremel. So here we go. So there we go now you can see the nice new tracks um next uh do another ones too at the same time so here we go so now you're moving on to the other one or two there we go second one done Okay, so inside now, using the Dremel. So, so sorry, we're only going to get in so far here. So, oh, just Dremels messing about now. Okay, so inside now. Dremel's messing about. Okay, so here we go. Okay, so that's as far as I can get. I can't get right up the top here because of the slip. Um, so this is where the washer holds these little brass pieces into the face of the clutch. So now on to the second one. Second one done. Final one, and final side. Okay, so that's a three of them done. So, um, next step now is washing out the casings. Um, yeah, the gearbox casings, and then we're going to start building. So, hopefully it all goes well. Okay, so because I couldn't get on um, far enough with the wee disc and the Dremel to track the inner um, tracks on these little um, friction parts for the clutch, I am going to track them using this little ball tip for engraving. So here we go. So there we have it. Uh, not perfect, but it's near enough. Not as good as outside. So we'll do the other two now when we're at it. Okay, so I forgot to mention there that um, I should give them a wee sand too when I'm at it. Um, just to remove the sort of glazed surface 
Um, so I'll do this to each one and then now and then uh, then I will move on to um, building the little gearbox and the clutch back together. So hopefully she should be taking grip then. So you can see the difference from that one to that one. So I'm hoping we will have takeoff when we put it back together. Okay, so final step before we move on to building this and hopefully it works. So um, just cleaning the excess grease with petrol and paraffin mixed together. So I think that would have been a bit of oil, but it's tend to thicken up um, to look like grease with the dirt and stuff. So I'll be putting gear oil back into it rather than grease. Okay, so that's the top cover done. Um, now moving on to the bottom. So at least we can see the little um, recessed uh, sort of slots where the selector shafts go into. Um, I couldn't see these when we took it apart. The dirt and the, the thick oil, the grease. Okay, so that's it finished, near enough. Um, clean the meat and faces now with a Stanley knife just. Okay, so we're going to start putting this gear assembly back together. So it's been a couple of hours since I took it apart. Um, first things first, we're going to place this little cuts part into the drum or the basket. So, the first time that we looked on here we could see no gap at the bottom on here where this brass bit meets this face but if you look on here now carefully and I don't know if you can see that but there's a little gap so this face now rather than hitting a dead stop on here it's hitting in contact with the side um, so we're going to start building this now we've got the nice tracks and everything in it uh, we have this face turned down, we have this face turned down and we have the face on the inside turned down so I'll start putting this together now and hopefully we should have the lawnmower going in an hour or so. So here we go, let me see where I start. Right, so we'll put the clutch together first. Okay, so that's that. A spring. We need a spring. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to get the hands dirty. Um, this first. Uh, basket. Okay, so the next step is this crown wheel. Okay, so there's the clutch now, back in position. You can see now when I squeeze this in, there's much bigger gap from between this part and this part, the parts that are independent of each other. So they're not going to hit. So this drum now is meeting the face of the friction plates rather than the friction parts, rather than hitting, coming in contact with this. So um, yeah, we'll put it together now back into the so you can see I have these nice and clean um, oh yeah we need to put the bearing on this and we also need to put the thrust washer on it sorry the thrust bearing and the shims so that's it built as easy as that and now you put the back into the gearbox You can see this time it's much cleaner. Okay, so next step now is the two levers. Oh, 
Okay, so next step now is putting it on the lawnmower. Um, we'll put the block of timber below it again and all that. So we'll take, we'll get the lawnmower and do that now. Okay, so we're ready now to mount this. Um, let me see if I get the camera set up first. Okay, there we go. So um, we're ready now to mount the gearbox. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, put it on the same way I took it off with the bit of timber underneath the gearbox. So the bit of timber is going to hold the gearbox in position um, to the shaft for us to put the top cover on and to fill it with oil. So let me see if I can do this. Okay, so that's it. So the next step now is this bit of timber. Yeah. So the timber's not tall enough, so we'll use this pulley with it. Okay, so gear oil now. Um, everything's in position, ready for the top cover. The seals are in position. The selector shaft, the clutch shaft, or sorry, the clutch lever, and the gear lever. So we're going to put enough oil on it, just um, half a cup full. So this is 80, 90 gear oil, quite heavy. So that's more than enough, I think. We'll put a bit on here too. Okay, so next step's a wee bit of gasket sealer. Okay, so now we're ready for the top cover. So this is a tricky part here, um, so we have to line up these levers to lease slots. So let me see if I get it right here. Keeping this one straight. Um, keeping the gear linkage at a wee angle. It's quite tricky this. Be better bringing the gear on the different or this lever on the different gear. Well to it straight like so. So we're ready now. What I like to do at this stage is just give this lever a little pull back. There we go. And that's it. Tricky process, but it got there in the end. So first things first is tightening these four bolts. Um, the 10 mil, 10 mil head, M6 bolt. Make sure to squash the silicone. So that's me engaging the clutch, moving this lever. So just need to double check at these. Oh, well, we can't really see the seals, but they should be in position. Otherwise, the cover wouldn't have went on. Okay, so next step is the brackets for the gear selector and for the clutch lever. Now the clutch lever. Um, I need to find the bracket because I don't have it here. Well, there it is there. So we're just going to keep it fully extended out. Okay next step is the pulley um, and then the belt. 
So what if I can see, oh I have to put the spring on here too. So I think we could do that now. Okay, that's it. So, taking this bit of timber away now. We put the poly back on. I'm gonna just double check these bolts. Oh, forgot about the cable. Probably. Not. And that should be it finished. And hopefully it works. Um, a treat. I cross my fingers. So what we'll do here is we'll put the belt on, grab the belt and give us a wee tighten. So what do we see? There we go. So that's it. Hopefully fixed. So we'll give us a wee tighten. There we go. So we'll check her now and then we'll put the cover on and hopefully it is a fix. Okay everyone, so that's it finished. Um, I'm going to now do a wee demonstration of it. Well, go through the gears, first gear, second gear, third gear. Um, also using the clutch. So, here we go. enjoyed the video um, in a week's time I will be uploading a video on my leaf I was going to say it's over in the garden but that's a different project so a video will be uploaded in one week on my model leaf um, on the conversion the tensioner part of it so it'll be really interesting um, I know this isn't a project but I thought it'd be quite cool to upload it um, yeah so thank you for watching everyone and goodbye Okay, so additional um, images and video clips of the engine building process. So here we have the crank case, um, the crankshaft exposed, um, stripping it. Um, so every part was removed, gaskets replaced, seals replaced, piston rings replaced, cylinder bore honed. Uh, here we have a little video clip of all these parts laying on the floor. Components. Okay, so first start after a full engine rebuild. So what do I see here? I have her primed and all. Um, have to hold this lever on at the same time. So what do I see if I can put my leg down through here? Okay, let's see what happens. Okay, so once the engine was fully rebuilt, I decided to repair an ongoing issue with this gearbox, um, self-drive. So the clutch was just basically always slipping. So as you've seen in the video clips there, I have modified the clutch now and brought it up to spec. Um, here we see the nice, uh, covers all finished, nice and clean, ready to assemble. And the final images here is just off the little friction parts of the clutch that I modified. So thank you for watching everyone. I hope you enjoyed the entire process. And come again for more interesting projects in the future. Thank you.